Hi, welcome to uh, another late edition of Mastodon's Bookshelf. Today is um, now November the 8th. Um, I failed to get this one done on time. Oops. Um, I blame the American election. Um, so this story today is called Creation Myth, because that's the idea that I worked with when I made it. Um, it's not based off of a creation myth, it's just kind of me writing a creation myth because I wanted to. Um, so without further ado, here we go. At first there was nothing except for water. The water was boundless without beginning and without end. It was infinitely deep. The surface of the water was a clear blue, but soon it turned into a black, unrelenting depth. There was no light. Above the water there was only darkness as well. If you dropped a stone into it, what would happen? It would fall through the water until it fell back in. The child puzzled over this idea, but seemed to find no answer. The aged man continued to speak. Water was all that there was, and it was out without beginning and without end. There was no light, no land, no air. Just water. There were no people. But then the revered one came. As she looked upon the water, she could not tell how deep it was, nor whether she was underneath its surface or above. The mother gazed upon it with her three eyes and came to a decision. How could she have three eyes? She had these two, the old man said, touching the child's eyes, and then she had another eye, a special eye, here. He touched the child's forehead between his two, two eyes. The revered one took her extra eye and hung it in the sky, creating the sun. Suddenly there was light. The water now had a surface, it now had depth, but the mother had sacrificed a part of herself to create the sun. That sacrifice gave us the sky. Now that there was sky, she was able to use her wings to fly. She flew through the sky and swam in the water, but soon she found that there was nowhere to rest. All she could do was float on the water's surface, but it was not restful. When she was tired, she could not sleep. Why didn't she lie on the ground to sleep? There was no ground to lie on. As the mother flew through the endless sky, above the endless water, a feather fell from her wings. The feather drifted downwards and landed on the water's surface. It became a small island. Now the mother had a place to rest. The revered one continued to fly through the sky and swim through the water. Whenever she would get tired, she would pluck a feather from her wings and let it fall on the, to the surface of the water, where it would turn into an island. While she rested on one such island, she walked back and forth along it and realized that it was small in comparison to the amount of water around it. With this realization, she took her wings from her back and placed them in the water. Again, she sacrificed a part of herself, and she created the land. Instead of flying, the mother now walked along the ground. In her footsteps, plants grew and flowers bloomed. As she walked, she created life, and the world, now bounded by sky, sea, and land, became as we know it. The revered one, however, was all alone. First, she created woman from her right arm to be her companion. She modeled woman off of herself. Two eyes, two arms, two breasts, and two legs. The mother was concerned, however. She knew that she had become lonely, and was worried that woman would become lonely as well. The revered one considered this, knowing that her relationship with woman could not be a relationship between equals, and this was not fair to woman. The mother then created girl, using her left arm to be woman's companion and equal. The mother enjoyed watching women and girl grow, play, and interact with each other. It brought her joy and happiness. She was content. Woman and girl, however, came to mother, and told her that each of them felt something was lacking. The mother considered this, and then she created man from her right leg to compliment woman, and boy from her left leg to compliment girl. Woman and man were content, but girl and boy still felt an emptiness in their lives. The revered one thought about this problem, and decided to create female from her right breast, and male from her left breast. Girl and female found contentment with each other, as did boy and male. The revered one watched as her children lived and grew. She was happy for her children, as they each had a companion, but she was also sorrowful, because she had sacrificed so much of herself to create them. She loved her children, and it pained her that she could not interact with them. The mother called her children to her and one by one each of them came. As her children gathered around her, she looked upon each of them fondly, bid them farewell, and passed on her final gift to each of them. What was her gift? The old man touched the child's head. 
She sacrificed her head and gave each of us knowledge. The man moved his hand and touched the child's chest, and then she sacrificed her heart so each of us could experience love.